What's a rule that was implemented somewhere that massively backfired? My city has issues with loud bikes vehicles. So as a deterrent, the city put up decibel meters that displayed how loud your engine is similar to those signs that read your speed and display it to you. But instead of deterring anyone, people would pull up to these signs and rev the heck out of their engines to see who could get the highest decibel count. The city took the counters down within a week. I work in manufacturing, and we get paid piece rate. So the more I run the more I get paid. We also have a base hourly pay rate of 10 hour. So whichever pays more the hourly or the piece rate is what we get, paid for the day. On bad days sometimes they bump us to 12 hour for the day, and when we train new people we get, paid 15 hour to compensate for having to slow down, or stop our machines, to teach the new people. The big boss, my boss boss boss, came in last week, now he used to work on the line, like I do now. But you can tell he's living comfortably in his corporate life, and has forgotten some of the bad parts of this job. He told my boss, that we are to no longer receive training pay because, by his logic, if we are working with someone we should be making more than 15 hour. Anyway, and these past 3 weeks or, so we have been doing a lot of training. So a few of us got together at the end of the day, and agreed if they aren't paying us, we won't train people. We will teach the new people enough to make us some money and leave the training to the designated trainers two people split between 15 or so new hires, but they make 17.50 hour. The policy lasted 4 days. Buddy of mine told me about a happy hour promotion a bar and close to his campus. Apparently the special was something stupid like 50 cent beers that lasted until the first person went to the bathroom, as he tells it. The first few weeks went without incident, but once it got more popular, people were going to extreme lengths to not be that guy including wearing adult diapers. Once people tried to covertly pee in corners and trash cans, the bar cancelled the promotion. At my old job, some people abuse lunch, so they made a few of them text in when they started and finished lunch. One guy specifically would text the start time, place he got food his order in detail, the address, price, etc. Even when he bought a snack while out. That stopped a week later. Popcorn 1 PC sent 11, 52 am. 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 Worked for a marketing firm that often locked you out of the building. If you weren't back in your cubicle by the second your break was up, they revoked your break the next day as punishment. This is not legal here in New York State. They got into a lot of trouble. I once saw a true crime show that was about a kidnapping turned murder case. Two guys had abducted another guy for his car, I think and had him in the trunk. The perps started talking, and one of them said you know, if we get caught, the sentence of kidnapping is the same as murder, so, we might as well kill this guy that way, we have less chance of getting caught. The chilling part was, that the poor guy in the trunk probably heard every word. When Domino's said all pizzas would be delivered in 30 million, all s or your pizza was free, all the delivery drivers kept getting in car accidents, to get your pizza to you on time, so it wouldn't come out of their paycheck, it was a short lived venture. This was a thing in Mexico for years. They delivered in motorcycles, and if they didn't make it in less than 30 minutes they just wouldn't deliver the pizza at all, and would sell it to whoever they could find on the street for half the price, so they wouldn't lose too much money. This was before you could order with a credit card online. School I go to has a rule that says, if you come late 3 times, you get an unjustified absence, which lowers your grade quite a bit. So if someone is late they pretty much always skip class, so they can get an absence, that can be justified by simply signing it. Lowers your grade, what the duck? Well, you got 100% in the math exam, but damn, you were late a handful of times last year. Sorry bud, no med school for you, I thought a grade was an indication of how well you understood a subject. Also. The infamous Barbados vs Grenada soccer match, 
the organizers of the 1994 Caribbean Tournament Cup had a rather odd change to the rules for extra time. If a game was still drawn at full time, it would go to extra time, but the first goal scored would win this is perfectly normal the golden goal rule. What was different is that they ruled that winning this way would count as having won by two goals for the purpose of tournament qualification. Instead of just one. Barbados went into a match against Grenada needing two goals to qualify for the main tournament. If they lost, or won by only one goal, Grenada would qualify instead. Under the regular rule, this would mean that if the match went to extra time, there would basically be no point Barbados playing, because even if they scored, they would only win by one goal, and not qualify. But the two point rule would motivate them to play on. Sound good? Well. You might be able to guess what happened. The match looked like it was about to end with Barbados 2. One Grenada a win for Barbados. But not the two goals they needed. So Barbados deliberately scored an own goal in the last few minutes of the match. Making the score 2. 2. Hoping to trigger extra time and a chance. To score the magic 2 value goal. The Grenada players quickly realized they could do the same score an own goal to make the match 3. 2 to Barbados which would have Barbados winning by only one goal. So Grenada would qualify. But the Barbados players realized that too. And so they began to defend Grenada's goal. So for the last 7 minutes of the match, Grenada were trying to score a goal in. Either net and scoring a goal against Barbados would give them 3-2, and they would win the match. And scoring in their own goal would make it 3-2 to Barbados, so they would lose the match, but win the qualification and Barbados were defending both. Amazingly Barbados did actually manage to do so. Successfully defending themselves, while half of their team were defending Grenada's goal against Grenada, and then scored the golden goal in extra time and qualified. Middle school wanted to create a trash free environment, so they removed the trash cans from the parking lots, halls, and cafeteria. Then just told the kids to toss your trash when you get home or in a classroom. The amount of litter skyrocketed overnight. After a week or so they brought back the cans. A salon I worked at one day decided to drug test the hair stylists. Out of 12 stylists, 11 failed. The manger texted everybody the next day and told them to come to work. I'm a stylist and I say this to applicants all the time. If they drug tested, there wouldn't be anyone working here. I worked at masses one Christmas, and found out the reason, why you can never find anyone at the registers, is because they don't allow employees, to stand at the register because it's intimidating. I can't tell you how many times I gave up trying to purchase something there, because I couldn't find anyone to ring me up. My last job got a new facility head. She didn't like the fact, that we wore shorts in a kitchen in the summer, when temps would get over 100. She made a new rule, that shorts weren't allowed, but skirts were fine. My supervisor told me I didn't have the stones, to wear a skirt to work. I'm a male. Guess who showed up, to work the best day in a skirt. The new rule lasted about a month before the new leader got tired of cross dresses running around the facility. Once I started it, all the other guys started wearing skirts as well. I do not miss that place. I used to work at a semiconductor lab, looking for defects in computer chips with an electron microscope. The work is complicated, precise, and easy to duck up. One wrong move, and the sample is toaster lip lost in processing. As they say in the bees, management got really angry at lips, and started clamping down really hard on technicians who did them. If you ducked up a sample, you got written up. The problem is, that not all jobs are created equal. Some jobs are really easy, and other jobs are really hard and risky. So, the smart technicians started taking all of the easy jobs. And the idiots who didn't know any better started taking all of the hard jobs. The lip rate then went up, and it created a really contentious atmosphere in the lab of people screwing each other over to take the easiest jobs. Morale plummeted, and people started leaving to go to other groups that weren't shit sandwiches. This drove lab output down even further. A hotel I used to work for decided they were having an alcohol-free holiday party. 
This didn't sit well with the people who'd been working there for years and were accustomed to a full bar at the party. The staff parking lot ended up being full of people drinking in their cars trying to get a good bus to carry them through the party and most people ended up getting way drunker than they would have, so the party was a shit show. You have to eat whatever you touch, was a rule in my kindergarten, which led to all the children touching all the food, to call dibs on it. Does that also apply to like, glow and shit, oh god, or the other children? Tag suddenly becomes lethal. Billy, pass me the ruler. Passes it, and at the moment of handoff their hands briefly touch. Their eyes lock together. Neither of them wanted this, but they know what must be done. Eats ruler. Washington state made it mandatory for schools to drop their room temperatures to save on electricity. The result teachers brought their own heaters into their offices and use of electricity increased. Worked for a warehouse 4 days a week. 11 a.m. 930 p.m. Monday to Thursday. They reiterated many times during the interview process that overtime was optional. My first day my supervisor told me that overtime is indeed optional. But if you don't stay for overtime then everybody else has to stay even later. So if you do leave on time. Don't come back. A hey, whatever. I didn't mind the extra hours too much. Although a 10.5 hour shift is already long. But the bonus was that we could go early if all the orders were done. As you can imagine. The good workers busted their ass from start to finish cutting as many con as good and bad ones as they could in order to get out early. Normally this ended up with us being able to leave around 15 minutes early or on a really good day where the stars aligned our everybody showed up. We could leave as early as 7, 30 or 8. However, leaving that early only happened once or twice a year at most. Overtime was every week. Every single Monday we would work until 2 a.m. 11 a.m. 2 a.m. isn't ideal when you have no idea when you're off. At around 7 p.m. we'd start to get an idea if we are in for another hour or another six. One of the genius new hires mentioned to the boss in the office how he was hoping to get out by six. Oh good. Apparently the boss was thinking us leaving early was a common occurrence now and decided that nobody was going to be leaving early anymore. Sweep or dust or whatever. But nobody leaves until 9. 30. All of a sudden we were late every single day without fail. Why? We were working our asses off to get out early, but failing every day, and ending up on time or still late. By taking away our ability to leave early, everybody gave up working hard. Slow down. We've got another hour left anyways. I'm not sweeping. Went from about 45 hours a week to 55. 13 hours every day. Nobody ever left early anymore. But nobody left on time either. Losses for everybody involved, because the boss didn't realize that us leaving early for two days out of a year actually gave us the daily motivation to work our asses off the other 360. Too long didn't read boss put a stop to leaving early. No incentive to work our asses off anymore. Means paying overtime every day. One of the high rise blocks I have to maintain has a sign saying anything left here will be removed due to it being a fire risk. People just dump the shit there they don't want like fridges and sofas, and by law we have to take it. Duck me right. Edit I have no authority to put up cameras as they are council blocks and I'm a council worker that has zero help from management, because quite frankly they don't give a shit, because they don't have to remove it. Congrats British taxpayers. You pay me to remove pieces of shit slit tipping daily. I'm sorry for the shitty human beings on this earth. Where is this? Asking for a friend. Consider subscribing if you enjoyed this video. And if you want to see more of Reddit Universe, 